Hi, we are at IA Mobility 2025, and I'm Mutazali, Senior Analyst at Counterpoint Research, and welcome to Counterpoint Conversations. Uh, today I have a very interesting guest, Brian Witten from Aptiv. Uh, welcome, Brian. Why don't you give a brief background about yourself, and we jump into the IAA and how, how things are in the automotive industry. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Uh, so I'm currently one of the engineering vice presidents at Aptiv. I've got about uh, 30 years experience um, uh, working in artificial intelligence as well as cybersecurity uh, and software engineering. That's good. Um, so Brian, you had a good look around IAA and generally within the automotive industry. What are you getting excited about at the moment, if I may ask? Well, so I'm uh, very excited by a lot of the progress that we're seeing around uh, ADAS. Um, I, I'm really excited by uh, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, and the sensor uh, evolution. I think we have uh, a real chance to make tremendous progress on uh, L2++ uh, mm -hmm. over the course of the next year, really bringing next-level driving experiences at a much more affordable price point for uh, OEMs and the public at large. And from a LT2 perspective, um, you, you think a lot of the challenges that the uh, industry has seen are now near to getting solved and we're going to see a more mass production of vehicles coming soon? What, was there a timeline you're thinking? Which, which, which problems are you referring to? So uh, th this is mainly to do with uh, the safety and security that concerns a lot of OEMs. Um, there is obviously a risk of uh, uh, accidents, and a risk of... Uh, true. Very true. A risk of safety, which uh, OEMs are looking at if they've solved with L2 to plus before they can actually roll it out. And that's perhaps what is holding some of the Western OEMs from kind of rolling it out. So what do you see? So I, and that's where I think uh, radar is a powerful complement to vision. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the very unfortunate accidents that we've seen, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I think some systems... Uh, depend very, very heavily on vision. I think radar is a powerful complement to, uh, to vision. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, the the redundancy of the sensor suit is quite important to L2-2+. Um, the uh, evolution of radar uh, is also quite prominent at the moment. We've seen quite a bit phases from very basic radars to now image radar. Uh, what have, what has uh, Active uh, done on the radar front and what is the journey looking like? And also in terms of how you're seeing the OEMs adapting it into the future? Well, I think for many years, Aptiv has been generations ahead on radar. We Most recently, we were one of the first to market uh, with a, a four-dimensional uh, radar. Mm -hmm. But that's just one of many examples of where Aptiv has consistently been years ahead of the rest of the market on radar. Yeah, because I, I believe Aptiv was the first to actually do the radar within the automotive industry, if I'm not wrong. I don't know. That might have been before my time. Yes, yeah, indeed. Uh, uh, I, I think that I'm, I'm probably correct on that. Um, in terms of how you see the market um, going mass market, uh, what are you seeing with OEMs? What does the timeline look like as we move forward, say, towards 2030, in terms of uh, the rate of adoption on L2 Plus for us? I, I, I don't like to uh, make uh, predictions. Uh, as an engineer, I like to demonstrate my results and let them uh, speak for themselves. But from, it, from your perspective... It is ready to go, and you should see uh, OEMs not hesitating to actually roll this out. I think I think we're seeing rapid progress, mm -hmm. and I, I think the uh, the, the timeline uh, uh, will reveal itself. Okay. Uh, when we when we talk about also the um, uh, radar, uh, I know Active also works parallelly with uh, other domains like aviation. Mm -hmm. But do you see the parallels between aviation or or, uh, and automotive, but also any differences that you see across both domains? So I, I think we see artificial intelligence um, in edge devices uh, revolutionizing many industries. Uh, in automotive, we talk about it as autonomy and active safety. Uh, in uh, aviation and aerospace, uh, we see increasingly autonomous uh, drones, uh, but we also see these constructs of edge AI uh, revolutionizing robotics. Uh, and consistently, it's uh, great algorithms on uh, great hardware with a very solid uh, software stack. And that's where we think the Wind River uh, software stack of mm -hmm. not only uh, the X-Works, but the Helix hypervisor mm -hmm. uh, for running safety critical uh, alongside, you know, higher functionality is uh, a great software stack. And uh, the continued evolution uh, from Wind River Linux to uh, Elixir 
Uh, and that software stack we think is essential, especially because uh, even on VxWorks now, you can do over-the-air containerized updates in a real-time operating system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So those kinds of uh, cloud-driven technologies are no longer limited just to the Linux side. Yeah. Uh, but you can get that kind of uh, power even out of your real-time operating system. That, that's a great um, uh, introduction to um, Edge AI that you brought in. I'd like to actually bring my colleague in who uh, does this field much better than I do. Thanks, Bertuzza. Um, I'm Greg Basich. I'm Associate Director and Counterpoint Research's Automotive Group. And I had some questions around Edge AI, just because that's something that Haptiv is focused on. So what are some of the most interesting use cases uh, with Edge AI that Haptiv is involved with and is seeing with its OEM customers? Uh, certainly. So as algorithms and compute power for edge devices have improved tremendously over the last few years, if you look at the autonomy uh, that we're beginning to see in uh, drones, as well as uh, you know uh, robotics, uh, in addition to the uh, autonomous and active safety use cases in uh, cars, it's just staggering greater progress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the things that I've seen in the market is shifting much more um, capable processors that have on device, they have uh, AI accelerators, for example. Um, are there any ways that you're seeing automakers are starting to take uh, advantage of these these capabilities, that Aptid is leveraging these capabilities um, in the hardware? So oh, sure. We're helping customers leverage these AI accelerators to deliver next-level uh, driving experiences mm-hmm. uh, with the active safety and uh, you know, early forms of autonomy. Okay. Are there any specific like use cases, for example, or um, example types of uh, features that automakers are focused focused on? You don't need to speak specifically about any any particular OEM customers, but um, some uh, examples of uh, say it could be automated parking, it could be L two plus. Just curious as to kind of your take on that. So we're, we're really obviously excited about uh, some of our uh, longstanding uh, customers. Yeah. We have some of this technology deployed in millions and millions and millions of vehicles. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it's thrilled to see it doing so well on the road and on the market. Um, uh, we're also in ADAS very excited to have, um, uh, you know, recently uh, at a consumer electronics show not that long ago, mm-hmm. unveiled our open server platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now we've signed our first customer. We're really excited about that program coming into production. Okay. Um, one of the other areas that you have a lot of background in is auto under cybersecurity. And with the um, advent of regulations, for example, UNR-155 in the market, um, that means there's now a, a bar for OEMs and for that they have to do in order to be able to launch secure vehicles. So what are some of the ways that Aptiv is helping automakers ensure that their vehicles are secure and compliant? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, what we love about the uh, regulations is they set an even bar uh, that everybody has to meet together. Uh, and there's both you know, technical requirements for secure boot, secure load, secure update. Mm -hmm. There are also uh, process requirements for making sure that you're doing security engineering from the very start Mm -hmm. uh, and deliberative in in how you are protect the system to build security and uh, so it's secure by design, not trying to bolt on security as an afterthought. Right. Um, And after decades of working in software engineering with a strong emphasis on sort of shift left, uh, knowing uh, that, you know, uh, an ounce of effort early, I can say you pounds of recovery effort later, Mm -hmm. We've had tremendous success uh, with that shift left approach, uh, doing a security very cost effectively at scale uh, for all of our OEMs. It's it's one of the reasons that uh, our customers trust us, uh, and uh, you know one of the reasons that you know that they've uh, and the industry has helped put me on the uh, board of directors for the automotive ISAC, which mm. is uh, in a uh, sharing information security analysis center for sharing threat intelligence. Uh, because the car industry is in security together. Uh, we don't compete on safety. We don't compete on security. Uh, I mean, the four-star versus five-star crash ratings. Uh, but the reality is, if something bad were to happen in uh, cyberspace uh, to a car, mm-hmm. it's it's not uh, one OEM would be hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, all cars would be less trusted. And similarly, uh, as suppliers, uh, every one of those vehicles on the road has many suppliers in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so if any car becomes less trusted, all suppliers. So it's a very collaborative, uh, collegial way uh, that we work together as an automotive industry around cybersecurity. So what's one of the main ways you've seen the, the market change in terms of how the OEMs approach cybersecurity to today? I know there's a, a bar for what the actual cybersecurity regulations are, but how are OEMs approaching it differently, say, now versus a few years ago? Well, if you, if you go back enough years, some of them struggled to put together the business case for justification. Mm-hmm. But because it's a regulatory requirement... Um, the, the money is there to do it, and they just want to know that the suppliers can do it right and do it right cost-effectively. Mm, okay. Good, great. All right, well, thanks so much for your time today. I definitely appreciate uh, your, your insights, and I look forward to speaking, with, to speaking with you in the future. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.